Good afternoon. Ha happy to be invited, Simon. Thank you. Um, I'm Daniel. I'm an academic plastic surgeon. And uh, <clears throat> normally, I'm uh, in an OR. Every day, I work in a team with young doctors, my residents, my fellows. We uh, do interesting operations. We do easy operations. And uh, <clears throat> my day looks like this. I put in some implants in uh, <clears throat> aesthetic surgery, or I try to make people looking more beautiful, like rhinoplasties, or I try to make people look younger, like facelifts. So it's something, uh, it's a routine. But sometimes this routine changes. And that's when the special cases hit the schedule. And this uh, happens rare, but it happens. And then you have to be alert. And I give you some examples uh, <coughs> from my experience, some patients I operated. There was this young girl, about 20 years old. She was working in the radiology department of my hospital. And uh, <coughs> she, she came and see me and said, you know, when I was a baby, I had a severe infection. They amputated my leg, and I'm wearing a prosthesis for my leg since then. But now I remembered I can't wear it anymore. I'm in the wheelchair because a stick looks out of my leg, and it's the bone, and it's just covered by a very, very thin layer of skin and I'm not able to wear the prosthesis. Can you help me? So this is maybe not for everybody, so <laughs> they don't like blood, don't look at it. But you know, on the left side, you see <clears throat> the situation. Young lady, the bone sticks out of the leg, and uh, it's very thin. So what would you do? Everybody told me, cut off the bone, close the wound, she is happy in the wheelchair. Don't forget about it. But you know, I couldn't stand not helping her. So I was thinking, what can I do? I did a lot of, or I still do a lot of breast reconstructions from cancer patients. They have amputation of the breast. I take the tummy. I transfer it to the microsurgical anastomosis and give them a new breast. So I had the idea to do the same thing for this girl but not put a breast on, but put it on her leg. It has never been done before, so it was a risk. <clears throat> it was a risk for me, it was a risk for the patient. We don't know how it's going, would it be okay? But still, she was a very courageous patient. She said, yes, let's do it. And we did it. It was a great success. She could wear the prosthesis. <clears throat> she could walk a bit again. She even got the, the job back. She worked 80%, she got married, she had a kid, and she recently tell, told me that uh, everything is very fine and she's happy. So it was a good thing to take the, the courage to take the chance. Another patient came and see me and uh, he had a cancer that uh, his clavicle was removed. So he had no clavicle anymore. He had pain in his shoulder. Every movement he did, he... Uh, couldn't stand it, he lost the work as a cleaner. So he asked me, can you give me a new clavicle? I was thinking, oh, you know, very hard to operate this. So I was looking at PubMed, you know, where all the publications are. Has there been done anything? No, never. So I had to have imagination, innovation. So I was thinking, how does a clavicle look like? It's a double ass shaped bone, you know? Where can I take a double ass shaped bone in a body? Ah, it's very difficult, we don't have it. It's just the other clavicle, but he needs it. So, uh, I was, yeah. Actually, it's not as funny as you think, you know? But, uh, okay. But uh, then I saw my friends with the computers, you know? They did a scan of the clavicle and then they planned a plastic clavicle from, for me, you know? And 
with this plastic clavicle, I could take this patient's bone from the leg, I cut it in the right angles, and I made a double S form, and I also transferred it with the team to the site, again, microsurgical anastomosis, and uh, I could help this patient as well. He had a lot less pain, but he couldn't work anymore, but the pain was better, and he had a good life. So, also here, happy to innovate something, to try something, to take the risk. Then another, another guy that I remember quite well. He was a huge fan of the FC Basel Football Club. He absolutely wanted to see a game, and uh, he climbed uh, a wall to see it. So, unfortunately, all his skin got ripped off his finger. And this is really not nice to look at. I'm sorry for that, but I couldn't find another way to explain that to you. <laughs> so, uh, they called me from the emergency. They said, hey, Daniel. Uh, you know, we have a finger to amputate for you. So I come down, I see the patient. He tells me, yeah, I don't want the finger. You know, I lost it. Please give me a finger. So I said, yeah, normally we have to cut up a, off a toe and transplant it. So you want to one toe less? He said, no, I need my finger because I want to be a police officer. You know, they don't like to take the, the guys without the fingers for the pistol. And so I don't know if it's true or not, <laughs> but you know. So I say I was thinking, you know, how can I give him uh, this? And uh, I was thinking I could just take the skin around his big toe with artery and veins and transfer it. So uh, that's what I did. And this was again a 10-hour operation like all the others as well. So it's not the easy thing. And you know, he was he was he he was brave because he could have lost his toe and everything is Something is not going good. But everything went well. And he got the job as police officer. And also, he can play piano again. But what I did different with him, I connected also his nerves. So here I did a flap that also gets sensibility in, in the skin. And he can use the finger to play piano or to shoot his gun, I don't know, but you know, <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> I never got uh, a fine since then from the Basel police, so that's <laughs> helped maybe. <laughs> so I was thinking, you know, what, can, what could I do better, you know? I learned that sensibility, nerves, regeneration of nerves is very important, and then when I was finished uh, with my residency as plastic surgeon, I could have gone to aesthetic surgery, but no. I wanted to find out how can you create nerves? How can you give sensibility to patients back? So I decided to go to Manchester, very rainy town. Uh, but it is, was very inspiring. It was one of the <coughs> only plastic surgery labs that you could go at that time. I got a project about nerve regeneration. My professor gave me some... Uh, tube, some tunnel that you can connect nerves, uh, looked like toilet paper, you can see it here, you know, it's some bacteria product, I didn't like it, you know, but uh, behind his back, uh, we were thinking from other ideas, and I had a friend there, he came from Sweden, Jonas Pettersson, he was like me, a PhD student, so we were going out a lot that night, you know, and so we had a lot of crazy ideas, but then one night we had this great idea to combine his work with my work. My work. So his work was he used to make a blood clot shell, which is called fibrin, and he grows cells on that. And I made this tube, so we combined it, and we had the idea to, to use this shell, this fibrin, to make a tube out of the fibrin, which would be very good for cells, which would be very resorbable and make sense to use the, 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 the factors of the body to create a nerve. So this is what you see here. This is the first, first uh, trials we did, and we used animals to, to look how it worked. And then, when we showed the first results, here you can see a re completely regrown nerve uh, in green. You see all the accents, the fiber that has crossed. And since then, uh, 
uh, the professors, they didn't know about this stuff. They really liked it and they got even the patent for it. So uh, <coughs> I was good, I got my PhD. I could go back to <laughs> Switzerland and there I didn't forget about it. And I did a study uh, where I used this uh, conduit, this tunnel, to reconstruct nerves in patients. I operated 50 patients. I used that what I and my friends invented uh, in Manchester in Switzerland. And I gave <coughs> to all these people a very good sensibility back when they had trauma nerve, su uh, nerve surgery. So it was a, it was a very good success uh, that I went there and found out something. But I was not happy. Uh, you know, I was thinking it must be better because these patients, they had good feeling, but maybe it was not like newborn feeling, not like perfect. So uh, I was working as young plastic surgeon in the Swiss Paraplegic Center to take care for the wounds. And uh, we designed a study where we injected stem cells in these wounds. And there we found out that this side where we injected the stem cells, they were healing fast, fast, fast. So I was asking myself, maybe my nerves can heal fast also using cells. So I took a decision again. I want to go back to the lab and I went to Sweden, Umeå, very cold town there. Only two, <laughs> two, two hours of sunshine. So. Uh, I had the idea to get the body fat, get the stem cells out of it, and uh, use them for nerve regeneration. Because at that time, it's maybe 10 years ago, it was possible to get out of the fat bone, cartilage, adipocytes, but not nerves, not swan cells that help nerves to regenerate. So that was the, aim, was the aim of my project. I went there, we developed a new protocol that we can create the stem cells. And we did some experiments again. We used the stem cells, we put them into animals, we used cells from humans, we looked at them, how they work, and uh, it was a fantastic work. I really liked it, and we then merged it with the fibrin conduit, and we regenerated nerves. And yes, it worked very well in nerves as well. You can see in the below, this is combined swan cells and uh, mesenchymal stem cells, how they have a big axonal outgrowth if you have nerves in there. Also, they have a lot of better isolator around these nerves. It's called myelin. This you can see on the left side. All these things, you know, nowadays, <coughs> uh, when I'm older, I use, I use it in my, pr uh, in my practice. Every patient I operate, I look, can I connect the nerve? Can I bridge the nerve? Can I reconstruct the nerve? I use it in head and neck cases. I give them a tongue that is sensible. I give the, the orthopedic cases a new skin that is sensible, that they can have maybe a ski boot that doesn't uh, uh, hurt them when they're skiing, or functional muscle, or I also like to do the breast reconstruction with a, with a sensible area, so they have a new sensation of the areola. So all these things is important, and all these things uh, are completely depending on this research and these innovations. So when I look back to this all, you know, I remembered one guy when I was going as an exchange student to the biggest in Amer American university in Boston, and the first day I went in, <coughs> the room, we were five students, and then the professor came in and he was a veteran from the Vietnam War, so everybody was a little bit uh, afraid. So he said, you know, just one thing, you're here because you wanna go uphill. It's so easy going uphill. If you have a decision, just take the harder one for you, and it's okay. And you know, I think about all these things, uh, me and my team, my friends, we did in the past, we always took the harder way. We didn't chop off the bone of this girl, you know? We didn't chop off the finger of this guy. You know, we took 10 hours operation, he took the risk, me, took, me I take the risk, we go the hard way. We go the hard way going uh, to universities, going abroad, learning about nerves, 
you know, so this is the way you can help the patients, the people, and uh, this is how it worked in medicine. I don't know if it would work in your area. Thank you very much.